Um, today, um, I'm going to show you a bit, as Julie said, um, the wonderful world of IIIF and what it means to use IIIF in an educational uh, context or in a, a public outreach context. So to do so, um, I think it's important to, to go back a little bit and take a step back and see what IIIF, what it is. So, so you can get like, we're going to get a little bit technical, but not too technical, I hope. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to show you what IIIF is, what it's made of a bit, and then we're going to uh, get going. And um, I hope there will be time to to get a bit interactive as well, so uh, so you can join us and play a bit around the IIIF, because I think, and I'll say it, I think a couple of times, to get really the hang of using IIIF, you just have to go on and, and play with it and use it, and uh, that's what we'll do today. Um, so first, we're going to... Share my screen. There we are. Are you seeing my screen? Yes. So this thing that I'm showing, with all this code, this is basically triple IF. It's, it's a triple IF manifest. Um, also, I want to say if I'm going too fast or something is not clear, uh, do not hesitate to interrupt me or ask questions in the chat and then. I'll get back to it. Um, so uh, this is Triple IF, uh, what it looks like in the big in a part of the back end. Um, maybe uh, at first I should tell you what Triple IF is about. So we have Triple IF spelled like this, and it's a international image interoperability. Framework. That's what the uh, abbreviation is all about. So that's a, a lot of words, not saying a lot of things, and at the same time saying a lot of things all together. So we have an international framework, which basically means it's a standard. So we have uh, all kinds of agreements on how to put the data and on, on how to put this code all together and what it is made of. So you see all this kind of uh, text values and labels. That's what they call uh, and there are agreements on how to put it on. We have the image, which mainly says it's about images, but we'll get back to that later on. But when IIIF started out in about 2011, uh, it was mainly focused on sharing cultural heritage images. Uh, and it has to be interoperable, which is also a very difficult word to say. We have to be able to share it. So we have to get out of our institutions. So we all have these digitized images. We want to get out of the institution and into the world, onto the internet, and make it interoperable. So they have to be able to communicate with each other. They have to be able to be shared, and uh, we have to get be able to to parse it into our applications. Um, that's a bit technical, of course, because I'm going to show what that means uh, apart from this thing, which we call a manifest, uh, and it's basically a URL and uh, I like to call it a key and it's the key you will need to use triple IF. So I'm going to put it here. It's a triple IF manifest and that's an URL. It's very important. Uh, so we have this URL and we use it as a key for a triple IF. Uh, it looks like this if you just open it. So I have this little application that shows it prettily. So this is just to show what triple IF is a bit or looks like in a technical background. Uh, I'm sorry if it's a bit complex uh, for uh, the nerds uh, between us. It pulls together um, data from either image service via an API or from your uh, data server, puts it all together and comes together in this triple IF manifest. Swat. <laughs> This is the difficult stuff. Now we'll get on to the fun stuff, which is manuscripts. And uh, this really cute, nice website we made, <laughs> which we're very proud of. Basically, we use what we did in uh, with Monk is we used IIIF as a way to collect manuscripts that had, had been digitized and put online through IIIF, so with this technology. We used that to bring everything together. So it looks like this. It's very pretty. Um, but if we get to this manuscript, 
So uh, we'll take the manifest link, looks like this. And now we're gonna put it in a viewer. I'm explaining it very difficult because it is not so easy, but you'll get a hang of it when you're playing around. So this is the result when you're using your key and you put a key, the manifest in a viewer here on the website. It basically did the same thing. We have our triple IF manifest and it opens the digitized, man digitized manuscript together with its metadata. Voila. So this is the first step. We have the manifest link, the URL. I'll show you how to find it later on. And we have the viewer uh, in which you can view your manuscript. So now we have the manifest here in our viewer. What does this viewer look like? We have several viewers to be able to view uh, your manuscript uh, in a way you want to. So that's one of the very much big benefits of IIIF is you can use your, your IIIF manifest link um, and you can use it for several applications. So if you, for instance, want to view your, your manuscript in Universal Viewer like this, you can just use it, but you can also use it to view it in another, uh, in another viewer, for example, Mirador. And uh, every viewer has its own benefits. But, uh, so we're here. Now, um, I think I'll show you if you use the triple IF manifest. So this is a manifest from this one. I'll parse it into the universal viewer. Do it like this. I'll show you what you can do. If it wants to load. So this is typically universal viewer. Here we have our manuscript. Uh, voila, you can see it. It has a bifolios. And we can zoom in, which is really nice, but you can also turn the pages like this. Zoom so out. You have the metadata coming along. So as I said before, it was mainly used for images, but um, later on people understood the importance of also including metadata with your images, of course. Um, and that way, when we share uh, parts of um, or details from your manuscript, in that way it stays in context. I will come back to that as well. So we have our manuscript here. I'll, I'll show it here. This view is a bit better. We have a universal viewer. Here we have the attribution. You can see where uh, the manuscript is located. So it's the providing institution. We have our metadata here, linked to the record. So you can get back to the library catalog. You know, other, it also depends um, on the institution what metadata is provided uh, because um, for the images, there's a standard, but for the metadata, there's not really much a standard going on for IIIF. So that's important to know, and it can vary a lot. So uh, at Bruges, we choose to include a lot of metadata in their manifest. Uh, Gant, for example, has a bit less, but there's also like the Vatican Library includes very little um, metadata in their uh, in their IIIF manifest. So it really depends a bit on what the institution wants to do with the IIIF and how much it wants to reach out with it. Um, so here we have the IIIF manifest. You can zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom out. Uh, and which is also really nice, you can download it. See on how big you want to download it. Uh, if you want to download everything, not all institutions provide an everything, all images download. As you can see, this is about six digit gigabytes of images, uh, including in terms of use. Uh, and you can share. On the one hand, you can share, which is also a really nice feature about Universal Viewer, and that's why a lot of people prefer Universal Viewer to Mirador, is, um, for example, uh, I want to share this little thing uh, with my coworker. What we would do in the ancient times, it would, we would make a screenshot, do it like this, 
Well, that's it. Yeah, we'll have this one and then share the screenshot uh, like this. Oh, nope. We would share the screenshot and then lose everything context. So we wouldn't know if it would be badly saved uh, from what manuscript it is, what library it is, uh, what folio it is, etc. We wouldn't know. But thanks to IIIF, <laughs> we can just uh, share a link. We could do it like this. Share this, and it will include uh, the, the location of the, the share. Do it like this, and then I can add it here. Voila. And I could just uh, make it feel like this. And normally, it jumps to the same page where we were, normally. <laughs> uh, voila. We can also embed the fragment uh, or the location from the space. So we can do it like this as well. It's a little iframe, so you can, you can include it in your HTML page. Uh, like this as well. It looks like this. It's a bit of a... Oh, I didn't copy paste it. Uh, well, it's an iframe, so you can just include it as well. It looks like... I think we have it here. Um, here it is. It looks like this. So instead of including an, a screenshot, you can just have this and then uh, have your detail as well. And it stays within your context as well. Yeah. You, if you click here, you can see your metadata as well. So uh, that's really cool. Voila. Um, so you can include. The download buttons determined. So it's basically like a mini viewer, but you include it, and in that way, uh, your your manuscript isn't getting lost in it, in in the page or, or uh, even if, for example, if you're what also happens is you just uh, include an image from a an exterior website or an exterior institution. If, for example, that institution changes its name, its names or its addresses, or doesn't put in a redirect on the URL. Uh, in that way, with IIIF, if images change in the manifest or, for example, if an institution um, has new digitized images of a bigger, bigger quality, for example, it can just replace the URL. So nothing changes. It doesn't break. That's also a really cool thing about IIIF. Um, so in other ways, you would lose um, the connection uh, or, or the, the URL. But now if you just uh, use the same manifest key, the link, everything stays in place, which is really cool. It's called persistent, uh, persistent URL. It's very important also in IIIF world. Okay, so this is the first bit about Universal Viewer. Hope you're still following a bit. I'm not uh, <laughs> making it very, very complicated, but um, let's move on to the next viewer, which is really, really cool. It's also, I don't know if I have to choose between Universal Viewer or a Mirador viewer, uh, I don't know which one I would choose. It depends on what you want to do. If you want to work with a lot of metadata and you want to uh, consult the, the manuscript itself, Universal Viewer is great. But if you want to do really cool stuff, Mirador is better. <laughs> so let's go on to Mirador. This is Mirador, but I'll, I'll take one of our own manuscripts because I know which ones are the cool ones. So these are the manuscripts from Public Library of Bruges, and this is a really cool one. Really nice drawings in it, I think. Do you want to do right? Yeah. Yes. Sophie, but could you perhaps is. slow down? A, a, oh, okay. can you hear me, Sophie? This is a manuscript with very nice uh, illustrations in it. It's called Illuminations. I'm not um. I'm not an expert on, on uh, manuscripts, as you will know. I notice sometimes I say uh, things that aren't very uh, manuscript studied like, but that's also a great thing about getting together with uh, manuscript specialists. I, I learned a lot uh, doing this project. So, for example, we have this really cool thing. Oh, I have 521. That's why. Let's do this again. Voila. Go to Bruges. 
That's better. I'll find the, man the manifest link. Um, also important to note is uh, finding the manifest link, it takes a bit of practice uh, because even though uh, a lot of institutions already have uh, triple IF, they kind of hide it, but not really. If you have to know where to look for, uh, like for us, you can see this is triple IF. You can get the manifest link clicking this little triple IF icon. So if you've just if you want to find a manifest link, search for this icon or just for the words triple IF and the URL next to it. Most of the time, that's enough. So I want to get triple IF manifest from this one. Voila. I want to see it in the Mirador. So this is a Mirador viewer with the standard uh, setup they always put. But I'll click those two away because I want to see my own uh, manifest. So I'll say start here, add resource. I include my uh, my manifest. Voila. And now I'm seeing my really cool manifest uh, manuscript. Very cool drawings. But what if I want to see it two times next to each other? So I can do the same. I can say, you know what? I want to see it twice because I want to compare this page with this page, for example. Or you want to include another manuscript with it. So let's say I want to see this one. Like this is an example of why sometimes it's hard to find the manifest link. Because right now I know for Ghent University, it's behind this tab. Uh, but sometimes you have to look a bit. I'll show you a shortcut later on. So here we are in the Mirador. Now I'm adding this one. Voila. And, and so on and so on. You can make it like, you can go on forever. I think I haven't tried to to break it and see how much manifests I can put in it next to each other, but I'm pretty sure you can just keep going. Um, now, this is a really cool thing about Mirador because uh, if you have uh, illuminations that resemble a lot, uh, uh, each other a lot, you can just put them next to each other. Or um, if you have fragments, for example, uh, that are shattered, if you have a fragment from a manuscript, uh, in our library, in the Library of Bruges, or you have a fragment of a manuscript, uh, say in Vatican, and you want to put them next to each other, or you want to make complete the original book again, this is a great way to do it, just putting back together like that, or just putting them next to each other. Um, also here for sharing your, your workspace, it's called in, in uh, Mirador. Uh, also seeing here, you can see your metadata, licenses, thumbnails, it's all included. Um, let the hamburger away. You can share your workspace uh, typically in uh, Mirador by having this, this also code, but you can save your work going like this and then uh, copy everything and save it somewhere in a notepad. For example, I could copy it here and uh, and then just importing this again in the same way, you just click it here, say import workspace. So for example, I just click this away, want to do something else, and then hop, say import, import that code, and it's all back again at exactly the same space. So that's also really cool. Voila. Oh, zijn we aan bellen? Dag Evelien. <laughs> I'm going too fast, apparently. I didn't see it. Sorry. <laughs> um, so maybe I should check the chat. Uh, ah, OK, um, that's an important question. These are all um, uh, browser applications, so you don't have to download anything. Uh, I will show you. We have here, we include it here in our advanced view. Now we have Universal Mirador 
it just changes. But if you want to just view, there is also other viewers like an open sea dragon. You can just Google it, Google universal viewer. Let's go like universal viewer. Just click the first result. You can post your, uh, your manifest here. Slash manifests. Voila, and then it just loads like this. Or for the Mirador, it's just the same. You can just Google it. Uh, also, we have on our website, we have this little space uh, put it here in English. If you go to about IIIF, we'll, we'll share it on later. You have the workshops here. And uh, this is a great way to view what I'm, I'm telling you at this moment to just look, do it on your own a bit and, and start with experimenting. And here we also have the links to the viewers uh voila so but i'll type it here so i have a universal viewer and a mirador viewer so these are the two uh main ones that are used um okay is it clear for everyone how to to use oh uh i see more chat uh how do you save what we are doing okay so um in the mirador you can save uh everything by going here and then the export and import workspace so you can export it here and this is just a clipboard so this is code you can just copy and paste that you save in a notepad or in a word document or anywhere else if you want to import the same workspace you just do it import and then you copy paste what you've done before so that's how you can uh, save your work um, but basically important to know that this is a uh, consultation mode so you cannot add annotations or um, uh, may make inscriptions or, or that kind of things that you would normally always do with manuscripts just add little ears and stuff <laughs> to know where you've been um, but yeah uh, so that's about the viewers. Um, voila, okay. Online, so <clears throat> this is about the viewers. Uh, did I say everything? Okay, I will show you a very nice website. Uh, it's Biblissima, it's here. And uh, this is a, a site that collects every possible um, triple IF manuscript on the earth. Um, so if you search for Boethius, for example, we'll find uh, all kinds of triple IF uh, manuscripts. And here again, you can see the little link, you can copy paste it. If you do it like this, it goes into it. So I took, uh, where is it? This little thing and I, um, I don't know what you call it in English, you just move it like this, uh, voila, and then you get a manifest, but you need this URL to copy paste it in your uh, universal viewer, just like this, voila. Okay, so, oh, that's a nice one. Here you are. All right, so this is one example of just uh, consulting it and, and showing your manuscript. But what if we want to uh, go on uh, and go a bit further and talk about storytelling, for example? We, um, we made an, uh, an exhibit, a tool, to be able to go on and tell stories with your manuscripts using IIIF, like this. Um, so I'm going to click some things away. Come on. So Evelyn made some really great uh, virtual tours, we'll call them, I'll show you, um, about monks and scribes working on manuscripts and leaving their signs. So what we're doing now is we're showing, I'm going to put this full screen, we're showing our manuscript in IIIF and making little annotations next to it. And we'll guide the viewer through our manuscript. Um, so 
you can really go to one detail, zoom, you can zoom out, zoom in. So you can go like this. There's a metadata included, so you can see from which folio what you're looking at. And in the meanwhile, there can be information about what you're looking at. So it goes like this. Here you see what also is really great benefit is you can explain what this is about. So here, you, this is uh, something in Latin. Uh, I couldn't read it if I just saw it like this. Uh, but Evelyn has transcribed it and put a, a translation next to it. Also some more information about uh, the manuscript itself, but I can also find it here. And I can just go like this. And I can see uh, where in our catalog it's from, etc. Well, that goes on like this. Is this is again? This is uh, something in uh, Middle Dutch, and the English translation is next to it. Voilà. Here we can see a nice example of uh, something sent. I don't know the word in English. It was uh, today. We would say this. This line was cancelled by somebody who uh, who read it. Is but. Um, a scribe wanting a pretty girl because he's done with the work. So it's a really, really cool thing. But this is a way to really guide your viewer towards the de this detail, because if you see it on a page like this, it, it, you, can, you can notice it, but it goes a bit away, I think. So for example, this as well, if you would want to see what's this about, you can just add the detail. Voila, and it goes on. Um, and a really cool thing is you can uh, use it, voila, um, with uh, YouTube movies as well, because uh, the thing about um, if you have a digitized object like a manuscript, if you see it like this in a viewer, you don't really know, well, you can see it in the metadata, of course, but you don't know, is this a really big book? Is it a tiny book? Is it a thick book? Is it heavy? Um, and the cool thing is, is if you include videos, oh, where is it? Here, if you include videos, you can just see how it goes. And also you can, uh, share the enthusiasm of the person talking about the manuscript. Uh, it goes like this. So this is another kind of exhibit we made. This is one that goes by itself. There are different, I will explain it to you in a bit. Voila. After the prologue, my follows explaining. the table of contents ah. of the rule. How the manuscript goes. I don't know if you can hear the audio including it. Yeah, I don't know. So, and voila. this initial this goes on. mark. Voila. So this is really cool. So you can uh, combine, uh, combine uh, the, the manifest in uh, or the manuscript in IIIF, but you can also uh, include other media like like YouTube. So, for example, if you want to make something like this yourself, we have a little very cute tool. It's Monk First Open App. It's also included here in a page in the workshop page. Uh, for that includes here. The the link is here. I will also put it in the chat maybe. Voila. So we want to make something like that ourselves. So we'll start. It's a very nice exercise also to get a bit of hang of finding IIIF manifests uh, and, and knowing what to do and how to find it. So in here you can see there are four different templates. Kiosk is the one that rolls automatically, the which one we saw uh, with the, this one, the rule of the Templars. Uh, we have a scroll. That was one like, like the slideshows, but instead of going sideways, it goes down. Uh, slides are just the slides as we saw them here. And a quiz is the same thing. It's, that's also a very nice tool. Uh, you, you ask some questions and then uh, the person viewing it has to click the right answer to be able to go on to the next slide. So you can make it a, a really nice tool in class of it or, or uh, in presentations to, to add some things up. So uh, let's, make, uh, let's make an exhibit. We'll need a title, so I'll add weekend. And the other, we need a little description. Uh, oh, I've put it on the quiz. I'll make a, a slideshow. Almost, there's no rights, it's public. I will allow or not allow duplication. 
I am not a robot and I have agreed to the terms and ex terms of service. Now I'll be able to create the exhibition. This is the beginning. Now, very, very important. You have to save the link. There's no login mode, so you can just start making exhibit. But if you want to go back to the exhibit you make or the virtual tour you're making, um, you need to save this link. Otherwise, your work will be lost for eternity. So uh, <laughs> save this link, very important. Now, we want to, you can also always change these things. So you can switch from template, which is also really nice. Now we will uh, please add an item. So we will add an item. As you can see, you can import a triple IF manifest or a YouTube URL. So let's find a triple IF manifest to include. Let's take one of our scribes up, shall we? So I'm going back because I know which one I want. This one. I want to include this little piece in my uh, in my exhibit. So I'll find the triple IF manifest. A very very uh, kind of workaround. Uh, so I'm going to a library page. I'm seeing a cake online, and here this is an example where there isn't. Uh, a little logo, but you can see it has the triple IF manifested the word itself here. So I'm using this one. Voila. Here we are. I'm going to add item, import, voila. And here I'm going to add it to exhibit. Now, uh, here I have the thumbnails. And now I have to go and find my, my scribe. I know because I prepared this that his he's all the way down. <laughs> I think it was full of your for your 100 there he is. So I'm gonna zoom in. Let's put him like this. Click on the plus and say this is a scribe working very hard. Nice thing is you can add some layout, but you can also add links. So, for example, if you do it like this, you can just add a link here, voila, and save it. Uh, and that gives some flexible flexibility on, on uh, link to other stuff. Don't forget to click on the V, voila, and now it's here. Now, if I want to include a YouTube video, I have to use a YouTube link. I uh, already found something I want to include. So I have this YouTube link here. I'm using the same method as including a triple IF manifest. So I'm pasting the YouTube link here, importing it, clicking on it, add to exhibit, and here it is. Clicking on the plus. And now uh, with the videos, you have to see you have to, have, have to add the duration. So you can just click on it here and see what duration you have to go. So if I'm going like this, voila. let's say I want just to have this fragment up to five seconds, and I can just go on like this and make it go down or slide to slide here. Voila, up to five, six seconds. The command, almost weekend. Clicking on the, voila. Here you can add, and it goes on and on and on. So you can just, uh, voila, make it like this. Include lots of several, uh, YouTube videos or lots of several um, and, or in different uh, IIIF manifests, etc. Now let's have a preview. So here we have our, our manuscript. We have our scribe, and he's thinking. That is what we can make it again, like this. Voila. So that's uh, a little insight um, exhibit and a tool you can make. Uh, and just how much you can uh, play around with it. I'm going to see. Ah, that's very important. Can you add pictures that do not have a triple IF manifest PDF GK into Mirador or Universal Viewer or into an exhibit template? No, that's. <laughs> um, I see their video and etc. No, not yet. Um, that's because uh, and I, that, I think that's a bit the, the, the hybrid way of working um, that not everything is possible yet in triple IF and it took uh, a bit of time to get to uh, get the YouTube format 
into the universal because exhibit is based on universal view to get it into universal view. Um, and also triple life is especially made for cultural cultural heritage objects. So it's a bit of mix and it makes it a bit difficult uh, if you want to make presentations, for example, with exhibit and um, you have some images that are not in IIIF and some that are, then the easiest thing to do is, is just link it, use the link, for example. Uh, but I do think it's it's going to evolve the, the moment you're, you're uh, more and more people are using IIIF from the community, it will get more signals out that it has to become more uh, intervened with each other. Um, but the, the the, the, being hybrid, the hybrid way of working uh, with non triple IF and triple IF materials is still a bit difficult. That's true. All right. Um, I don't know if I still have a lot of time. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'll show you one more thing we did with triple uh, IF. Um, let's go back to our website. I think I have it here. Yeah, I have it here. This is uh, Liber Floridus. We made an annotation demo using uh, the Mirador uh, way of viewing to, to research how we could structure a lot of data about manuscripts on a single folio. Because I think uh, what the Monk School showed especially was that um, uh, we have a lot of different kind of studies and a lot of different kind of sciences coming together in the objects of the book, the manuscript itself. Uh, and of course, everybody wants to share their information uh, and using it in a visual presentation can be very important and very nice. But what, how do you get all this kind of information about these folios together? So we uh, searched for that um, and we worked with an annotation. We made a demonstration, an annotation demo, we call it. We made all kinds of categories of the typical uh, annotations, so typical little pieces of information. And this is what it looks like. If we click on all the categories, we have this kind of uh, paste, and I just can, you can open it, and it has uh, the person who annotated it, the source, which is also very important, uh, when it was created, and also, it's not very clear here, but when it was last adapted. So when it was last changed, we have transcriptions, uh, and uh, what's also very cool is, um, let's go up again, here, uh, for example, what I find very useful if you're interested in transcriptions and translations, for example, you can just click this, this has a transcription, but I also want to know it's a uh, translation, so I will pin this one, I'll get this one out, and then voila, it says next to it, it has the translation which opens a lot of um, uh, uh, possibilities uh, towards uh, really getting in depth with, uh, with the manuscript, even if you're not uh, very good in uh, uh, biography, for example, or Latin <laughs> for that. Uh, for that uh, um. So yeah, normally this is this is a demo, so you can't zoom in it, uh, but we shared our results with. Uh, the IIIF community, and uh, so uh, from a user uh, UX perspective, this is a this has been really good tested, and it shows all the possibilities of sharing a lot of information in a very structured way. This is also possible with IIIF, um, and there are a lot of other uh, use applications uh, for IIIF, like for example the uh, the manus manuscripts of the Dune Abbeys have this really little cross as a provenance sign in them um, and we think using triple if and it will be uh, if we scan them on the little dune crosses um, a lot of manus manuscripts that are not uh, discovered yet within the provenance of the dune abbeys will come to a uh, come to discovery that's well another application of using triple if because the images and because of the the manifest link uh, as a key, it can be inserted in a lot of applications without having to go to the, the library or having to download the images or having to uh, connect with the institution itself. You can just use the manifest link, it's there, 
and and because it's a standard, you can just uh, parse it into your application or your tool or your digital humanity uh, AI um, applications, etc. So um, I think do I still have time? Evelyn, maybe because I, I feel like it's been a bit uh, maybe a complex exercise. So I will share um, the link to our workshop page. Maybe follow. And this is uh, like a um, very stepwise program in how you can start playing around with Triple of yourself and how you can use it uh, and get to know it better and uh, see the benefits of it and, and go further with it. 